Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, my name is Invin and today I am bringing you guys a guide on the best PvP class that I have found during the New World Beta, which is going to be like kind of an all-round damage dealing class, it works very very well in PvE as well as PvP, but PvP is what we're going to be focusing on today, I'm going to explain to you guys how these skills actually work and what makes it so good for PvP, so if we have a look at the attributes I have got here on screen, we've got 152 into strength, 50 into dexterity, 55 five intelligence focus, not focused on them at all, and 86 into constitution. This gives me a decent amount of HP, so if you have a look here, I've got base HP of 6092, that's without any stat boost in food, etc, and without any healers and, you know, kind of tanks around me, that sort of thing, so in group PvP, it might be bigger than that, but right now, that is what level we're at. Then we've got 50 in dexterity, as that does give me a 5% chance to critical hit, does give you 10% skin in speed as well, which is quite nice, and the the axe actually scales off both strength and dexterity, so it's a 0.65 scaling off dexterity, because that's its secondary stat, but it does boost it just up a little bit, and then obviously my primary stat here is the strength stat, which, well, the great axe scales solely off strength, which is why this is at 722 damage, which is really nice, and then the hatchet is off both, like I said, and the primary stat is 0.9 multiplier, so that one is off a 587, which is pretty good for a very fast attacking weapon. Now, if we go into weapon mastery, as you can see, I've used the hatchet since pretty much three or four days into the beta, I switched over from the sword and the shield, and the spear and now I've used the hatchet for primarily all of my content since then. Then I've used the Great Axe for probably the last five or six days. Both of these work together in a really good combo for PvP because the Great Axe allows you to catch up to people, have a little bit of CC, and the hatchet allows you to deal fast, quick damage, stay alive with that Berserk proc as well, which is really, really nice. And as you will see here into the stats and the attributes itself for the hatchet, I actually have Defy Death on, which is really, really OP in my opinion. So we've got that on there as well. So I'm going to go through the, the abilities I've got first. So on the hatchet, we'll run in Berserk. Obviously, this increases damage by 20% by default, and I've then gone for the passives that increase movement speed by 20% whilst it's active, give you a portion of your health back every 5 seconds, so essentially passive health regain, triggering Berserk, which removes all CC effects when you do actually trigger it, and also I've gone for while in Berserk, your attacks are uninterruptible and you cannot be staggered, because this makes Berserk very, very good. I've then gone for the Raging Torrent attack, which is my R currently, and this one is perform 4 attacks that deal 90% weapon damage each, but then I've gone for the passive upgrade on that which is hitting one grants haste for 20% for six seconds and the final blow one which is pressing light attack at the end of it gives a final attack so a fifth a quick succession attack and this one deals 120% weapon damage instead of 90 so it makes this ability very very good and then we've also gone for feral rush so we've gone the entirely into berserk tree here feral rush is the one where you sprint forward attack a player and hit twice the first one deals 115% and the second one deals 130% and this one is excellent for pvp Probably this one and Berserk are the most kind of crucial too. With the passives on this one, you've got if the target is below 30% health, Foe Rush deals more, 20% more damage, and you've got Crippling Strikes. Now, this is a ridiculously good ability for PvP. Foe Rush hits the target in the back. It causes a root, immobilizing the target for two seconds. So you can't do it if you hit them from the front, but if you do hit them from behind when they're trying to run away from you, then you do actually immobilize them for two seconds, basically stun lock them in place for a couple of seconds there, which should be really, really helpful. Now, like I said, I've also got Defy Death on, which gives you a reduced health to 50 and gain immortality for three seconds and this is a 75 second cooldown but each fight this means you can basically evade death because you can pot up heal up etc from this your healer gets chance to actually flick to you if you are playing in a group or in a war type scenario so this is really really good for staying alive and it's super good as well for pve content like your expeditions I've then gone for Desperate Refresh, so cooldowns are reduced by 2% when hitting an enemy with an attack while your HP is below 30%. Really nice to reproc your Berserk or reproc your Foul Rush, or even reproc your Raging Torrent if they're close to dying. You can go ahead and finish them off with that, which is really nice. Then gone for Against All Odds, which has increased the base damage by 10% for every enemy player within 5 meters of a player, which is nice if you're getting ganked, if you're playing in wars, all that good stuff. Really, really nice. And then obviously we've got this Fortifying Strikes one down here, which is hitting the same target with 3 light attacks, grants Fortify. Increasing damage absorption by 15% for 3 seconds. This is really, really good. You can keep refreshing it, particularly in expeditions versus bosses. This is insane. But it's also really good if you are doing a duel or even a 2v1 or 3v1 where you can able to focus out different targets at once. 
excellent perk. And finally here on this side of the board, we've gone for Frenzied Purge, which is when hitting an enemy while your health is below 30%. It removes all bleed, burn, and poison dot effects, so damage over time effects, from the player on a 60 second cooldown. So this is really, really good. If someone burns all their abilities, gets you quite low, you hit them, you've popped your Berserk, you're going to do really, really well, so you're going to go right back up in a HP, and you're going to damage them a lot. And then I've also procced one point for now into this aimed throw perk, which replaces the block with an aimed throw that deals 95% weapon damage, which is really nice because you don't really block that much with a hatchet, or I haven't found myself doing so. But this does mean you've got a bit of range capability with this build because this is very, very close range build. But you have got a lot of catch up with a great axe, like I said, but just having this ability to throw things does really, really help. And I've got a lot of damage off, a lot of kills off, especially in duels when people like to kite around a lot. Just stand still or dodge around left to right and throw axes at them. It really puts them off because they don't expect it from a hatchet user. So I've got that there. I do also have two more points which I could proc into. So I'd have to look at the board and see where I wanted to go with those. But I could go for something like throwing hatchets against the target with an active debuff. Reduces all your cooldowns by 5%. Could be really, really nice. Or I could go down this end of the tree with critical throws. So throwing axes are capable of hitting a headshot or random, random crit chance and increases critical hit chance of all attacks by 5%. Pretty nice perk, so I could go down this route as well. So I'd have to look at those when I do level it up, but that is the setup I've got right now. Then looking into the Great Axe then, so I'm only level 14 on this one, so not quite as high a level, but we do have all of the active abilities that I think are the best currently, but I'm going to give you a couple of options as well here, because there is a few that I use differently. I would always go for Reap. This one is very, very useful. It's the Extend Your Axe 5 meters pulling foes towards you, dealing 110% weapon damage, and it is Taunt Gen compatible if you are going for that type of build as well but the really important thing here is if you get the passive upgrade it's now an 8 meter reach the second passive is heal for 30% of the damage done by reap which is lovely and the final one here fatal attraction is after you do a pull you do a spinning attack which does 115 weapon damage which is really really nice so that makes reap very very good and a ton of damage quick burst damage with that one there I then also go for charge this one is kind of like you catch up charge 10 meters dealing 120% weapon damage when you reach your target or press left mouse button to stop it earlier uh, this one is really really good for your catch up in pvp and obviously just to move around the map quicker in pve or general gameplay you can go ahead and upgrade these i haven't done this yet but charge now deals a little bit more damage and then the third one is really really good because during charge you can press right mouse button to execute a swing dealing extra damage based on how far you've traveled so it's kind of a good one if you do want to full spec out your charge perk as well if you're going to use it as an engagement rather than a reposition or kind of like a backup situation. Um, I've then gone also here for execute. So this is a powerful overhead attack dealing 200% weapon damage. Deals 300% weapon damage versus foes. Under 50% health which is really nice. And then I've also gone for the passive that execute gains grit during the attack making the attack unstoppable which is super useful. And finally execute critical hits 100% of the time versus foes that have less than 30% health. This makes this attack very, very good. The only thing I would say here is that it's only one real catch up here. Now, lots of people like execute, but some people do swap it out and actually go for gravity well on the Mauler tree instead. And this is because you can actually pull foes in for a longer amount of time, keep them CC'd for a longer amount of time. And this can be really, really useful in PvP, particularly in war situations where there's a lot of enemies on screen. This is going to be really good. So it's kind of up to you how you want to spec it. I've gone for both, and I actually have to say I do like both. But I've just found Execute to be more effective for open world PvP when you're generally fighting one, two, or three players at once. Because you don't really need Gravity Well for all of them. But when you're fighting five or more players at once, Gravity Well was really, really good. So it's up to you what you want to pick there. In terms of other passive that I've gone for. I've gone for Greed, which is light attacks with the Great Axe to give you 5% damage for 5 seconds, and that is a 3% stack max, so you can get up to 15% extra damage. I've gone for Critical Gains when you make a critical hit with your Great Axe heal yourself for 10% of the damage done. Really, really nice. Super good on Execute, particularly if you've got them low, they've got you low. You Execute, deal a decent amount of damage, you heal a little bit up. Maybe you've got your Reap up, you heal a little bit more. Kind of works well in a combo there. We've also then got Critical Condition, which gives Great Axe attacks against foes below 30% health. Critical, 15% more chance so again that paired with then the execute which is 100% of the time below 30% but if you're just doing normal attacks this has also got a 15% more often chance to critical hit them when they're on low HP so it's again just finishing those kills quickly and then finally feed here which is great axe attacks against foes below 30% health again heals you for 10% of the damage done so it's really really nice basically when you're getting them low you want to switch to the great axe when you're not just chasing around and things do a load of damage to them and you'll be able to heal yourself up quite a lot and be able to finish 
finish off the damage really, really quickly on these players because you've got a lot of execute type moves. This works really, really well for PvP with the stats that I've got. And, you know, it kind of makes sense to have a hatchet and a great axe because they scale off strength. Obviously, the hatchet's a little bit of dexterity as well. Other good options that I have looked at in terms of synergy would be the Warhammer because that also scales off surly strength. The sword and shield would be really good with the hatchet or the great axe because it is strength and dexterity. The spear works really well for me in the start of the game. I just kind of moved towards the great axe to try it out and preferred it personally for my playstyle. But the spear is really, really good too. You could also go for the bow if you are going for the hatchet build. You could then do a dexterity main build with the bow there as well. Obviously, you've got things like the spear, then fern, and the mix with the hatchet. But generally, it's kind of up to you what you want to focus on. This is just how I found it to be the best. So hopefully, you guys have found this video useful and informative. If you have, please do leave a like on it down below. And if you are new to the channel and you've enjoyed today's video, you'd like to see more New World content from the channel, then please do go ahead and press the big red subscribe button down below. Make sure you turn notification bells on so that you don't miss an upload. And other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching. Take care and peace.